What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million. Today, we're gonna to be doing our essential first mods on our Panigale V2. Guys, it's a great day. It's always a great day when you have a new project starting off because it's a lot of excitement. And here we have the parts. I said it's the essential first mods and it literally is because the bike has two miles. I refuse to ride it without the radiator guards. We have our DHE 83 radiator guards and there's two radiator guards. It's not one oil cooler, one radiator on these bikes. As far as I know, the whole thing is a radiator. We're gonna be doing our TWM fuel cap. We have the aluminum one. We also have the carbon one. I actually tend to like the aluminum ones a little more. We have our caliper spacers to get rid of the dreaded reflector off of there. Our tank protector, our screen protector, and obviously our NRC fender eliminator kit. But without further ado, let's get on the bike. Let's start off and let's make this bike look a lot better. So I got the bike here. This is, I think, the easiest radiator guard install of any bike. And uh, it's refreshing to say that with a Ducati on the stand, right? Because uh, I know that the exhaust and everything is a pain always on these bikes. But basically all we gotta do is access these bolts over here, get our radiator guard prepped, and just put them on the bike. And let's see how quickly we could do this. So this is pretty simple, guys. We have our radiator guards, the upper one and the lower one. All we want to do is we want to grab our foamies over here. We're going to just cut them to little strips and we're going to place them around the frame of our radiator guards and then we'll put them on that way. It's number one, not touching the radiator directly and number two, if it's to vibrate, it's not going to make a lot of noise because these foamies will just stop it technically from vibrating or it'll just dampen the vibrations of it. This one is ready. Just a quick note guys, when you guys get these, there is no way to make this precise with these bends. So if you put them in place, and if it's not centering up or lining up as you wish, you could always grab these and just like this, you see with just a little bit of force, you could bend these into shape to get this exactly covering this up. This is a very common question that we get asked and that's the way to do it. Now you guys have it on a video. So if you were directed to this video, hopefully you stay to the end of it. If not, let me show you how it's done. So guys, it wasn't YouTube magic. It's actually very quick as you guys just saw in the video as well. Our upper and lower radiator guards are installed. One thing to mention is that Again, I made some adjustments to the brackets for the lower radiator guard to make sure that I have it nice and centered to my liking. If we take a look closely, there are some gaps on the right and left side edges. So the way that the radiator guards are made, you can't really have a bow shape on it. Everything has to be straight or right angles. That's why you'll have very slight gaps on each side and it's up to you to be able to adjust it to center it. It's very easy. Anyone can do it probably and we have it sitting perfectly on there. And don't worry, you're not gonna get anything going through, through, through your radiator on those edges, because for that to happen, your steering has to be turned almost this much. And if your steering is turned by this much, you're probably just making a three-point turn. I've never seen in any application where the steering is this much turned on a motorcycle and you're going fast enough to sling anything up because as you know, the faster you're going, the more lean angle you'll have. And most of the times that means your steering is almost straight or close to straight. So you know that your radiator guard is covered. So now that we're in the front, let's get rid of these dreaded reflectors off of our calipers. This is very straightforward guys. We got a caliper spacers and we got a reflector that acts as a spacer. And you're probably thinking, why is the caliper spacer on top of the calipers? I'm thinking the same thing to myself. The only explanation is that the reflector has to go on there somehow and they decided to use some sort of a spacer type thing to use it. And we said that we're gonna be changing our brakes. And if you upsize your brakes, you could just run the caliper spacers that's on top to the bottom of this and run Panigale V4 spec rotors on this, which is a bigger rotor. Is it gonna make much of a difference in terms of braking? Probably not for a street use, but if you're a track out an extreme 
street rider, you're gonna benefit from running the larger rotors. But for now, we're gonna keep our caliper spaces on this side, and when we progress through the build, you'll see those caliper spaces go from the top of the caliper to the bottom of the caliper. So that's one side. Let me do the other side, and I'll torque the calipers down to spec, and uh, it already looks a lot better. This versus this, this wins, and also it has the red color on it, which matches the kind of the theme of this motorcycle. And if you're not a color person, these also come in black as well. So guys, the bike is lowered a little bit, but it already is looking so good. And I think for this bike itself, because it has a lot of the red accents, these caliper spaces work really well. And uh, there's gonna be a lot more red accents coming for this bike, but I think this is a great start. And uh, just the fact that we have the radiator guards on, I know that it's not gonna get stone chips or, or bent by stones, let's say, it's gonna do it so well. Why do we put these things on and why don't I ride without radiator guards? Because thermal efficiency of your radiator is all the fins that are on there. Once you ride and rocks get thrown at it, things get thrown at it, those things start bending shut. And that means that the air can't go through it. That means the thermal efficiency of your radiators are lowering. And I know by putting a screen in front of it, we're probably reducing some of the airflow to it. But trust me, by the time you probably put 500 miles on this bike, there's gonna be so many bent fins on there without those radiator guards that the airflow that this thing reduces is very minimal. That way our radiators stay in the tip top shape. And I'll throw a Ducati joke in there. We know how hot these things run, so you gotta try to keep it as cool as possible. And that's the way to do it. And on top of it, the bike is black. This whole area is now blacked out, so it looks much better. So now that all that's done, let's try to get up top here. So it's gonna be some convenience things that we do, but also again, the theme is convenience, performance, and make it look good. Up next is our screen protectors by Shulatron. And uh, let me tell you this, if you were to price out the cost of one of these screens, well, the instrument cluster for these bikes, and you can't just grab one and swap it because you, Ducati has to program it, everything has a VIN number on it, you will put one of these on it real quick because your cell phone probably costs a little less than this and you already put these things on your cell phones and why not on there? The cost is so little that, you know, you might as well do this. And uh, I think from the packaging, it looks a lot more expensive. They've done a really good job with their packaging, but it's as simple as doing this on your phone. I'm sure everyone's done this. It comes with everything you need. I wanna wipe the screen first. And if you guys want a tip to do this on your cell phone, I'm sure we've said it on another video, but go into your shower, turn your hot water on, miss the whole bathroom. So it's nice and steamy in there. That way all the dust is gonna just fall onto the floor and you can put it on your phone. Unfortunately, we can't stick this in our bathroom over here and uh, get it nice and warm. We're just, we're just gonna try it over here and we'll just wipe the screen. And then it comes with a nice, Microfiber cloth. Look, this is this bike has two miles, guys. It already has scratches on the screen, which is a shame. I'll try to line it up as good as possible. And this thing wants to stick right away. Perfect. There you go, guys. Crystal clear, everything looks good. And while we're touching our key, I think this is for sure an essential first mod. But let's put our Motor Million keychain on it. Although this keychain is pretty nice. From Ducati. There you go, there's a keychain on it. And if you guys are wondering how to get this, you could either email us, it's also on our website, or usually on your first order, we try to send out the keychain to you because we realize that it's your first order. But again, it doesn't hurt to ask if you have ordered and haven't received one, just let us know. And that being said, all the products that we use on our videos is in the description below. We have easy links to it. And again, if you have any questions about it, put them in the comments or reach out to one of your Motor Million team members. They'll be more than happy to help you. That being said, let's get to the fuel cap. This is an amazing convenience mod. 
because you don't have to remove your key, pop your fuel tank with the, with the gas station. You could just quarter turn it, open it, fill up and get, get going without even removing your key from the ignition. All you gotta do is probably tap your phone or card at the pump, pay for your gas and you're good to go. So the fuel cap guys, this is not gonna be a step-by-step -step instructional guide on how to install your fuel cap on your Panigale V2. But if you search our channel, we actually have a video showing it on the Panigale V4 and it's the same thing. And this is a question that's always asked because this fuel cap has a flange attached to it. You gotta remove it. Go we'll watch the video if you still have questions. But it's as simple as taking these four bolts out, taking the flange out and transferring everything over to, to your new fuel cap and then just putting everything back on there. And uh, here we go. I'm being brave and not covering the hole with a rag. Hopefully I won't drop any bolts in here, which I think if you want to take any instructions from this video, cover this hole when you're doing this. This is your flange. This is your fuel cap. This is your gasket. Make sure this is on your fuel cap. If not, you're gonna get a leak. We've never, ever, ever had a leak on these fuel caps, guys. And when we get a leak, it's most likely because this is not installed or the fuel cap's not installed properly. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and prep this by putting our bolts in here. Again, if you wanna watch the instructional video, we'll show it step-by-step step to you over there. So again, don't forget your gasket. Make sure it's nice and firmly in place. Put it here, line up your holes, grab your bolts, and we just have to first start threading these in by hand to make sure we're not cross-threading these. And also these fuel caps come in two different carbon fiber styles. There's no right or wrong choice. I just happen to like their CNC machined aluminum fuel caps quite a bit by TWM. And just a note guys, there's a lot of counterfeit fuel caps that are out there. These fuel caps have been in, in production, I don't know, for the longest time. If you guys have uh, seen our video about the CBR that we wanna purchase, the Fireblade, we dug up some pictures of my 09 Fireblade. It had a TWM fuel cap on there. That's how long these fuel caps have been in production. And TWM was actually the one who invented the quick action system. And for the longest time, if you purchased the Ducati Performance branded fuel caps that were made by TWM for them, if you take a look, they look exactly the same. Then they just changed the handle design and now I think they're all Rizoma by Ducati Performance, so it's a completely different style. But uh, that's just a disclaimer for you guys. And again, if you guys, uh, prefer to have it in carbon fiber, those are also available. And we're just gonna go around and try to tighten this thing down. And then this will be all good to go. Well, that's it, so then check, press down, quarter turn, it opens up and put it back in. And the second disclaimer, I guess we could call this. Guys, if you install a fuel cap, doesn't matter what brand on your Ducati, and you all of a sudden realize that there's pressure buildup on your tank, it's not the fuel cap. Fuel tanks never breathe from the fuel caps, guys. The only difference is this old fuel cap is hinged like this. So when there's pressure buildup and you open it, it just pops backwards and to you that feels normal anyways. In this, you're actually physically removing this. This is not hinged. So you really start seeing the fuel pressure buildup on your tank. This has been a common problem for years and years and years. It's your charcoal canister system that's probably plugged. So especially if you're riding a Ducati or an Aprilia, don't try to top your fuel tank to the brim. What happens is the fuel goes, starts going into your overflow. The overflow is, well, middle of the overflow system that you have is where your charcoal canister is. It starts filling up with fuel. Then the exhaust fumes can't escape your tank anymore. Then you get fuel pressure buildup and on the Panigale V4s and some of the Street Fighter V4 models, the exhaust gets so hot that it starts boiling your fuel, then it causes fumes, then the fumes can't get out and you get pressure buildup. It's never the fuel cap 
the fuel caps do not breathe out anything because if they did, all you would smell is fuel while you're riding. It's the same case with the race fuel caps like this and your stock fuel cap. I just want to put it out there because especially if you're riding a Panigale V2, you might be new to the Ducati world and these very weird problems that you get to see. But uh, now you know, let's get on to the tank pad and then we'll be done with our fuel tank and we'll happily remove this fender from this bike and put a beautiful fender eliminator on it. And we're running our tank protector from Ducati Performance. These are available at your dealer, but also on our website as well. They're genuine Ducati products. So this actually has real carbon fiber inside. It looks great. Otherwise, I'm not really crazy about carbon fiber that looks like carbon fiber that's not carbon fiber. And uh, these things hold up really well. This comes with instructions. It comes with our little cleaner. You wanna make sure your tank is free of dirt and any kind of oils or chemicals, even wax, because it's gonna compromise that stickiness of that piece. And now comes the fun part of centering this on the bike. They give you some references. The Panigale V4 ones are actually a lot easier because there's a complete reference from the top of the tank to the bottom. This is a Panigale V2. We don't get any kind of references like that. And of course, it's so easy to just to put it off on without an adhesive and move it around. But with the adhesive, you can't really do that. What I'm going to do is one little piece of it. And the best way to tell is from the tail. Probably should have removed this tail tidy kit off of it doing this, but we'll give it a try. I don't know, that looks pretty straight to me. Let's try to do this now. I'm gonna remove this. And we're gonna go piece by piece. Our tank protector is on. Let me try while we're here to see if we can remove the sticker. And you know what this says? This says something about fuel spray may cause injury. So they already know about the whole gas buildup on the fuel tank. And let me just grab that excess stuff off of it. Now we're gonna make this bike look a lot better by removing this ugly fender off the bike. And I could tell you that in a future episode, we're probably gonna remove this seat, which is gonna make this tail look as gorgeous as a Panigale V4. And uh, I think this bike looks even better because it's so slim and tight, but uh, let's get to this fender eliminator and then we could officially get to ride this beautiful motorcycle. All we gotta do is we gotta take these bolts out Luckily on these modern motorcycles, they make it really easy to remove this because they realize that people want to take this to the track. You're not allowed lights and stuff like that on most tracks, so they make it very easy to be able to remove your fender. I think those are the two things that we have to remove. And you unplug this. There we go. At this point, please don't get alarmed saying that your fender eliminator has three plugs and your bike has one plug. That means that we've skipped the step of taking this apart. We're gonna dissect the, we're gonna dissect the wiring harness that's inside this fender and use it on our fender eliminator. There we go, we crack this thing open. And all we gotta do is unplug these. Give this clip. There we go. So, has one plug on one side, three plugs on the other side. And let's get our fender eliminator ready. This is all plug and play and easy to install. This is the right side. So the right side is DX. The left side is SX. There you go. And the third one is your license plate light, which is on this piece over here. Okay. Before I go any further to assemble it, and uh, what I wanna do is I wanna get this on the bike, make sure everything is working properly. My license plate light and my turn signals are functioning as they should. And then we'll go ahead and assemble everything together. It's plugged in. The key is here. So the license plate light works, right turn signal, left turn signal, and perfect. I also want to mention that you're not going to be running any kind of resistors. 
It is running at the DOT rate, it's not hyper flashing, which is again, if you wanna make sure that you're on the legal end of things, it's always good so that these kits are made with that in mind. Now we just have to install our fender eliminator together. So this is your light unit and this is your license plate mount. If you want, you could run it in the standard position like this, where I think your local law enforcement agents might be a lot happier and your toll people so that you could actually see your license plate like this. And if they're a little nicer, they're all nice, but you know, a little nicer, you could run it like this in the tuck position. I'm gonna run this in the tuck position. That's what we kind of run over here. They don't really give us much trouble here in Florida. And on top of it, actually our toll booths pick up the license plate mount in the tuck position and we do get tolls with it too. So it's kind of legal in that sense as well. Well guys, the fender eliminator is on. We've installed our plugs to make it all nice and finished. For one last time, let's make sure everything is on. Our license plate is on and right turn signal, left turn signal, beautiful. And I know we get this question a lot and I always say this when we install fender eliminators. Yes, there are various fender eliminators out on the market. We use NRC because number one, it's made in the US. Number two, it's so bright and so clear that you're indicating right or left and also your license plate is well lit. And you gotta take these things into consideration when you're purchasing a fender eliminator. It's not just how good it looks, it's also how wide apart they are so that you could easily tell if you're a driver or another rider that you're signaling right or left, that you're not compromising on safety. And just by judging by the looks of it, I think this looks so good and also just the detail that is flush from this hole here to here, I really, really like it. So that's the reason why we chose this. And again, we give thoughts to every single product that we install on our bikes and we offer it to you guys. As I mentioned, all the products are in the link in the description below. And uh, I think this is pretty much it. Our first essential mods for our Panigale V2 are done. Now the fun is gonna start where I take this bike for its first ride. I'm saying this again, it's got two miles. I haven't ridden a V2 at all. I think I've ridden a 1299 many, many years ago. And uh, I really wanna see how this compares to our Panigale V4s and Street Fighter V4s and DLL V4s with the big boy engine in it. Let's take the baby Panigale out for a ride on the next episode and I could tell you guys my honest opinions and thoughts about this beautiful motorcycle. Until then, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.